Hi guys, I'm Heather. I'm a holistic nutritionist and a GAPS practitioner. And today I want to talk about three ways that our gut health affects our mental health. So I work with clients one-on-one -on -one, and usually they have a host of physical issues they're dealing with from like food intolerance or their histamine intolerance, swelling, eczema, however their body manifests it. But when I talk to them, I find out they also have either anxiety or depression or insomnia, probably like 90% of people. And the reason is when your gut is messed up, your brain is messed up. So let's get into the three reasons exactly why this takes place. The first one is that our neurotransmitters are made in our gut. So neurotransmitters are kind of like hormones for your brain. And I think they used to think they were made in your brain, but it's been shown that a lot of them are made almost exclusively in the gut when you have healthy gut bacteria. So serotonin, for example, that's like a calming, happy, feel good antidepressant. And then when the sun goes down, serotonin actually turns into melatonin and helps you relax and sleep really well at night. But it's made by healthy gut bacteria. Traditional cultures, whether it was like Russia, Germany, Korea, they all have fermented foods. It's just a part of life. And these are filled with bacteria that repopulate their gut probably daily. Like in Korea, they have kimchi multiple times a day. And so they were constantly repopulating their gut with beneficial bacteria that would fight the bad stuff and would create neurotransmitters. The second way that our gut health impacts our mental health is toxic gases. Like I mentioned earlier, when we have way too much bad bacteria in our gut from decades of eating poorly and taking too many antibiotics and drinking unfiltered water and all that stuff, we get this overgrowth of bad bacteria. And good bacteria that we should have create vitamins, they create hormones, they create neurotransmitters, enzymes, all these good things that restore your body and make you feel amazing. The bad guys exhale toxic gases into your system. So even if you clean up your whole life and you get rid of your perfume and you detox your cleaning products, you need to recognize that a huge source of toxicity is actually in your gut. And it's important to point out too, let's say you're like, okay, I really want to get my gut health sorted. I'm going to start GAPS intro. That can make you feel even worse because what you're doing is you're constantly having a bit of toxicity in your body that's making you feel crazy. Then you go on intro, GAPS intro diet, and you cut out the food source of all these bad bacteria and you add in probiotics that kill those bacteria. So now you're killing off all these microbes in your gut and they're just releasing even more toxins into your system. So if you're wanting to jump into GAPS, just be aware of that. It can make you feel worse temporarily, but there's things you can do to improve it. One thing you can do to improve it is doing all the detox protocols. In the book, there's a list of them, castor oil packs, not if you're pregnant, coffee enemas or regular enemas if you're prone to constipation. We don't want constipation because if you have all these circulating toxins and you're constipated, like there's a big plug in your bum, it makes it really hard for them to get out. So we need to be having a bowel movement every day to get those toxic gases out, to make us feel clear headed. So if that's you and you're doing intro, you might need enemas. You need to be having a bowel movement every single day. Oil pulling, swishing in your mouth, dry skin brushing, detox baths, foot baths, laying out in the sun, sauna. There are really so many things you can do and all of those are gonna help get that toxicity out. Another thing that's really helpful is using a binder. Often people think of like activated charcoal, which is one, or clays. They go in and they kind of act like a magnet. So let's say all those bad bacteria are dying off because you're starving them and they release all these crazy toxic gases. That binder, when you take it, acts like a magnet. It pulls to the toxins. So rather than those toxins just circulating in your body and making you feel insane, it holds on to that. And then when you poop, it comes out. And I've had clients who've had like migraines or really bad eczema or something, and they're doing this gut healing diet. And initially things start getting worse. Then they take a binder on an empty stomach, ideally. And it's like, oh my gosh, my migraine went away. Or immediately I don't feel crazy anymore. And that is just even more proof that those toxins are the thing making you feel crazy. You're not crazy. Okay, the third thing is a leaky blood brain barrier. You've probably heard of a leaky gut which is where our intestines and our stomach lining that's supposed to be mucosal gets inflamed, bad yeast and stuff puncture holes in it. It gets irritated, it gets ulcers, and it's basically just inflamed. And then food, undigested food starts leaking into the bloodstream and it's just a big mess. It can make you feel terrible. But we also have a blood brain barrier and it's supposed to be formed of tight junctions and it's supposed to be really well regulated. When we have the overgrowth of bad bacteria, they cause inflammation in our gut and that inflammation actually signals for our blood-brain barrier to kind of paralyze and open up. 
So now where it used to regulate what's coming in, it used to let in maybe glucose, some protein, some oxygen for brain health. Now it's letting in parasites and undigested food and gluten and casein and all these things that we actually want to stay in our gut. And that is where we get things like brain fog. It can be a contributor of chronic fatigue, epilepsy, any mental health stuff it can be a contributing factor for. So I hope this was helpful. Like and share if you enjoyed it.